Hey, this is Tim with Ultimate Makerspace. Today we're going to be looking at my Weller WLC100 soldering station. When it comes to soldering, the right equipment can make all the difference, but at the same time we don't want to break the bank, and I think this is a good balance between the two. So let's take a look at it. While it's budget friendly, the soldering station has all the features that you really need for uh, some pretty serious work. It has a holder for the soldering iron, which is really nice. You can put it away and grab it out easily while you're positioning things. A sponge down here for cleaning the tips. Some people like to use different types of tip cleaners, but I think a wet sponge still works just fine. Um, over here you have uh, control for your heat. It's not a closed loop control like some with a thermocouple in the gun. It's rather just a... Uh, control of the power that goes to the gun, but that seems to work just fine for me. I don't need to dial it in any more accurately than this will do um, for some pretty precise work. So I've been really impressed with it. It's also made by Weller, which is a, a well-recognized brand name. It, to show how this works for me, I have a couple of jobs to do today. One, this toy car uh, with the solar panel on top had the leads break off, so we're going to solder those back on. That's more of a, a coarse, easy job. Um, to show the, the power of this. And the other job is I have some of these logic level converters that change 3.3 volt to 5 volt uh, logic levels for microcontrollers. And we're going to solder some header pins on. And this is some pretty fine detailed work. We can show how this iron will work great for both those applications. For both of these jobs I have the soldering station set at about 3.5 which is pretty hot. And so the first thing I'm going to do for this repair is to melt the solder that contains a small remnant of the wire that broke off before and it came off with the soldering iron there a little hard to see and then I'll just take and melt that solder to give me a nice substrate to attach to so I've put the wires in my little helping hands fixture I love this thing it helps a lot with soldering and I'm gonna go ahead and tin the wires so that they'll be ready to go and I won't have to feed solder in when I uh, attach them to the car itself So I'll heat the wire and then use the wire to melt the solder. And I'm using rosin core solder here. So the center core of the solder is uh, flux essentially that um, will help the solder to flow and to adhere. So you can see the tip was starting to get a little bit dirty as I did that. And so I'm going to go ahead and clean it here on the wet sponge so we'll be ready to go for our soldering operation. So uh, I'll simply hold the wire in place since it's tinned and the substrate is soldered as well. I'll heat up the wire and that will melt the solder and um, give me a nice joint. So that job is is done we'll move on to the more delicate job. Um, when I'm soldering these header pins on one of the challenges is they can wiggle around quite a bit when you install them so I like to use just a really cheap breadboard to hold the header pins in place and then I set the circuit board on there and get ready to solder and, and, and once again I use the soldering iron to heat the pin and then feed solder into the pin and the nice thing about the chisel tip that comes with this is you can do that larger work using the the flat side like we did with the the toy car or you can use the the edge of it like this for more fine detailed work and um, you can see the solder flowing in there quite nicely so we got this job done and the results are really good. So overall, I really like this soldering iron. It's a great deal for the money. Uh, check out the description for a link. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Ultimate Makerspace.